What is up my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Crowded Lake. And today we are continuing Apotheosis, a very nice fanfic by a show Stop and Star Kid on Wattpad, starting at chapter 4. If you like this fic, go ahead and check it out or the author in the link in the description below. If you'd like to hear the first three chapters, you could go to my previous Wattpad Reloads episode. And if you'd like to recommend a fic for me to read, written by someone else or yourself, there'll be a link in the description below for a Google form where you can fill out and submit a fanfic to read. And without further ado, here is chapter 4, Cell Block Tango. I thought you might be happier to see me, Henry smirked with only the tiniest hint of malice in his eyes. You're not you, though, Harry shook her head. But I am, and you know that. Henry hopped off the table. Harry could hear Emma shuffling away in the distance, perhaps into an adjoining room. Emma was smart, using Harriet as a distraction. Harry watched her uncle begin to approach her and started backing up. You know everything about us. Yes, well, know thine enemy. Harriet chuckled nervously. If um, you really are in there, Uncle Henry, then you won't kill me. You mean save you? Henry corrected. No, you won't be able to convert me, Harriet smirked with a faux confidence. She guarded herself, though her uncle continued to approach. You would never be able to tear my guts out. You know we both share the Hidgen signature sensitive tummies, and you never could stand to see me in pain. Alternatively, you'd feel weird kissing your daughter figure, wouldn't you? You make two good points, Henry considered. Fine, you've bought yourself some time. I suppose we'll have to wait. I'll have to stay here, of course, to supervise you. You're too resourceful to leave on your own. I know, Harriet winked, still acting like a fake confidence to cover up the nerves eating at her. I'll have to wait for Paul to get here for Emma, who we've locked in the side room for now, Henry planned. Clever, isn't she? Extremely, Harriet agreed. IQ is far higher than that of the average barista. And she's not stuck up, either, he continued. Did I tell you one time she got us groceries? I could see her doing that, Harriet nodded. You know. I've missed this, Henry started. Don't, Harriet flushed, looking down. I have been broken all day because of you. And just as I begin to pick up the pieces, you have the audacity to stroll in and talk about how you've been hurting? You betrayed me, Henry. You ruined everything. Harriet, I'm- he tried again, this time sounding genuinely hurt. Sorry? It's a little too late for that, don't you think? Harriet spat. My whole life, I trusted you, and you risked everything for the fantasy of the world, where working boys could be successful. I heard what you did. It isn't as if you got attacked. No, you called them to you. You asked them to kill you. I did it for us, Henry whispered lowly, pulling Harriet into a soft embrace. She pushed away him. That's bullshit, she scoffed. You've got some nerve trying to make things right. Things will never be right again. You showed me exactly how much you care about me. Harriet, it... Please, Henry begged, taking her hand. Just then, there was a downbeat, followed by a guitar riff. Henry smirked a little and pulled Harriet into a tango form. Harriet couldn't resist a tango on the best of days. On her worst, she was taking it gladly, despite how upset she was at her uncle. Now, Harry rolled her eyes. Seriously? And also, this uh, next song, I, this is not in the story, this is me actually talking. It's supposed to be in the kind of style of the cell block tango, 
and I listened to it like three times and I'm trying to work it out, but I can't because I'm a little dumb, so kind of bear with me. Back to the story. I'm sorry if you feel, feel that I've betrayed you. Henry sung, Harriet melted into the form, following him as they began to dance. His voice was somehow even better than it was before. Absolutely flawless. Or if in any way I have dismayed you. <laughs> dismayed you? Harriet scoffed on beat. Rhyme scheme? Harriet chuckled without missing a beat. Trust me, darling, when I say that you are my heart. And yet you would selfishly act, knowing you would tear my life apart. Harriet sung. God, she thought. She sounded good, too. You think that loving words are going to sway me. I'm just asking for you one last time to obey me. He grinned at the sung passages from Harriet, a pride that she'd always strived for on his face. Join us, and then I swear it'll be you and me. But see, I don't want to die, so stop trying and just let me be. Harriet shook her head, Henry swiftly turning her into him and dipped her before getting her back into a perfect tango form, all within four counts. Next up, a duetic chorus. Harry could sense it. Mind you, she'd been training for situations like this since she was born. How did we end up like this? They both sang together, Harriet beginning to spice up the footwork on her end a little bit. We're in, we're in agonizing hell when we should be living bliss. Let me back into your heart. Henry sang, but not before Harry could overlap. I should have accounted for failures from the start, Harriet sang over him. And now we're through, they sang in unison. They then broke back into harmony, stuck dancing along to the tango missing you. you. I see you kept up with your ballroom dancing in that bunker, Henry. Henry smirked as the two of them danced effortlessly together. It was my exercise, Harriet nodded. Remember when you used to get all dressed up in your princess gowns to dance with me? He asked, reminiscing. I kept all those dresses in my closet, you know. Those memories mean the world to me. <laughs> those were simpler times, Harriet chuckled. Will you ever forgive me for what I did? Letting you down, Henry sung, looking almost guilty. He was getting fancy with positioning and dips now. Probably since it's almost unbearable seeing you frown, Harriet confessed. Though I never expected you to be a man to shatter my trust. A man must do what a man must, Henry told her, somehow in the brief beat between do and what, Harriet had managed to kick over Henry's shoulder and hook on so he could drag her across the floor. So maybe you betrayed me and I am broken, Harriet sang almost a sigh. And that's why this exchange is sung and not spoken. But Higgins always stick together, that is a fact, they both sang together in perfect harmony. Then they settled on unison. And Hitchens don't generally think before they act. Though, I assumed you were the exception, putting a whole apocalypse guide in everything. Harriet butted in quickly. Guess not, Henry shrugged. And here comes the repeat of the chorus. Why are we stuck in someone else's game? They sung in harmony again. Has humanity forgotten its entire sense of shame? I don't deserve the forgiveness you gave, Henry started. Without forgiving you, I don't know how I live, Harry overlapped. It's just two, they sing in unison. Forever stuck dancing the tango, missing you. Forever stuck. Dancing the tango, missing you.
They continued to dance for an eight count before ending with Harriet sliding into her slips. Harry, Henry offered her a hand up, which she took, brushing herself off. Then it hit her. That was the first song her uncle had sang to her as one of them. She hadn't looked into his eyes yet. She couldn't bring herself to. The way Emma has described it was terrifying. You being able to tell it wasn't them, even the fact that she just had done a song with him was terrifying her. But it wasn't that he'd sung to her that hurt her. It was the fact that she had sung along without any issue. She hadn't even realized the implications of it until just that moment. What was she? Her uncle broke her thoughts. That was a little nice throwback, wasn't it? Henry chuckled. I am assuming that you've accepted your fate. Well, there is no escaping it, Harriet sighed, though she had a plan. She just needed to get Emma. She didn't feel right leaving without her. How long until my inevitable end? Uh, two minus five minutes, Henry sighed. So that's it then. You kill me and stabilize me enough that I must surrender my mind to your collective? Harriet asked. Mm, that's essentially it, Henry nodded. I wish I didn't have to come to this. Your mind is so sharp, and I fear that we may dull it. It, it doesn't, she told him. You can let me go. No, I can't, he sighed. Though there are more lenient on me than most since i obsessed with theater already and typically am not a threat to them there's only so much i can do with them in my brain i i harriet wasn't expecting that oh god that was her uncle she just knew it she had thought until this point that she was talking to a replicated personality based on the data from her uncle's brain, but that passion, the genuineness of the tone, was nothing that could be re replicated or recreated. She immediately latched onto him. Oh, God, it's, it's really you. It took you that long to figure out, Henry chuckled, hugging her tightly to him. No, it only took that long to confirm it, she blushed. I have no clue if you remember this as vividly as you do, but you reminded me of one of my favorite memories of you. When I was preparing you for this, I taught you a lot of landmarks for identifying those infected based on predicted symptoms. You were three at most when I started, Henry stated. What I stressed in particular was tone, and I used the example of saying I love you in sounding genuine or not. Every day for the last three years after day one was awoken by the patter of your footsteps running into my room, you jumping on my bed. I'd make you tell me you loved me. Harriet smiled, pulling away from the hug and pulling her uncle onto a lab bench with her, leaning into him once they were both up there. I wanted to be sure there were no aliens yet. Every morning at four o'clock, since you were practically early riser, I would say it. He chuckled. And I still will now. And I still will now. I love you, Harry Guinevere. And I will forever. Wait, how are you? You, Harriet asked. As was aforementioned, they were very lenient with me. Since a great many of our goals aligned, they allowed me to keep control over most of my mind, so as long as I obeyed them, Henry explained, I can only hope they are so flexible with a great mind like yours, though your running isn't doing much for your chances of that. I, I don't want to die, Harriet allowed herself to weaken a little. And... Don't say I won't, because we both know that the only thing sustaining you is that alien. Granted, Henry sighed, pulling her closer. For the record, I'd rather keep you alive. I'd love to see you still achieve your purpose. Be a hero. But I can't let that happen, or... Well, in essence, I 
die. They aren't willing to wait for you any longer. I'd have to surrender my body fully to them, and I don't want you living in a world where there's a lifeless drone version of me out there with the sole intention of hurting you. I understand, Harriet sighed, and then there was silence. The pit in Harriet's stomach grew, dread washing over her body. She had just gotten the chance that she wanted, a chance to say goodbye, and she couldn't bring herself to do it. All of a sudden, she heard a small, delicate piano roll. She supposed it was about time she exposed her raw emotions through song. All my life I've loved you, now it's over. Don't say that, he trailed. Shh, this is my song. You listen, Harry chushed him. At least this time I'll go out with some closure. Harriet, he sighed guiltily, looking down to his feet. You're the father that I never had, who I love and adore. Harry looked him into the eyes. She didn't like it, but she needed him to understand her. She looked into them for a moment, curious to see whether he looked like himself. He did. She could really tell it was still him. Weird, she thought. Since earlier it had appeared that he was one of them. Like, they had control. And I'm glad we're together. It's my time. I'd wish I'd done more. Why does our time have to end so fast? They both sang sadly. And though our time is short, we've made some memories to last. I can't do it. Henry looked away. What? Harriet asked, looking at him with concern. I said, I can't do it. He repeated. Uncle Henry, no. Harriet urged, tears starting in her own eyes. I've come to terms with it. Don't do this. It won't be responsible. I won't be responsible for your death, Harriet. I'd be a monster. A one must think I am if I allowed myself to do that, Henry stated, firmly looking to her eyes. But I won't be dead. They could make me like you. Harriet let out a small sob. They won't. Henry shook his head, looking down sadly. Go now, before I change my mind. Un Uncle Henry. Harriet trailed off, pulling away from the hug and hopping off the table, slowly backing away to the side of the room. She slowly turned and put her coat into the keypad. Hurry, Henry urged, face controlling to pain. Harriet opened the door where she saw Emma pressed against the wall right beside her, hugging onto it for dear life. A tall man in a simple white dress shirt and tie was approaching her. She looked terrified. Shit, Paul, it doesn't have to be like this. Emma whimpered. Harriet examined the scene. Her hand was just within s simple reach, and Paul was just far enough away to have a chance of missing her. Harriet took a breath, then pulled her by the hand of the room. Come on! Harriet urged, pulling a dazed Emma along with her and locking the door. Go! Henry cried out on a final note. Harriet looked over to him. He was in pain, and he was begrudgingly starting to walk towards her. He looked like he was holding himself back. She knew what was happening. There was a battle going on in his head, between him and them, and he was losing. She urged Emma towards the door and paused for a moment herself, unable to bring herself to leave. Good goodbye, Uncle, she whimpered, knowing she had she would have to leave. Go <clears throat> He pleaded, tears running down his cheeks, his face controlling in pain as he began to approach her. I love you, she sobbed, tears running down her own face, one hand on the door handle. He was getting dangerously close. She took one last look into his eyes. It was as if it was flickering from him to them. She couldn't quite explain how. Go! 
He belted out one final note, and Harriet saw his eyes flash to one of them. She took her cue as she lunged for her to run out the door and slam it. She heard a crunch and assumed she might have caught his hand. That was really it. <laughs> she whimpered, sensing Emma behind her. What do you mean it was really him? Emma asked, approaching her slowly. I mean that they allowed him to keep control of his body, Harriet told her. How? Emma began. He was so similar to them that they cut him a deal, I suppose. As long as he obeyed them, he'd keep control, Harriet explained. That definitely was not Paul, Emma chuckled nervously. It would have been even harder leaving if it was. <laughs> it's weird. His attitude changed so rapidly rapidly. Harriet shuddered. He went from the beginning having so much confidence that making me one of them would save me, only to say later that he didn't want to kill me. It's almost as if he was one of them at the beginning, but they loosened their control on him for dramatic effect, I guess? And even before that, earlier, after the la da 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 day reprise, he looked dead on the inside. Like, he was one of them. But when I looked in his eyes just now, he looked like himself. I have a theory. Which is? Emma asked. Would you describe the events of the initial attack as almost plot-worthy? Harriet asked. I come to think of it, it would have made a damn good movie, yeah. Emma nodded. They know they haven't got full control of the situation, and I don't think you were supposed to get out of there alive. They were going to have a nice, tidy musical with no loose ends, Harry told her. Holy shit. Emma was picking up a lot. Harry smirked at this. She could see why her uncle was so fond of the girl. Your escape made it necessary for there to be a sequel, Harry continued, and I was supposed to be the tragic gift by a family member. Inevitably, you escaped Paul because Uncle Henry wasn't intended to break as soon as he did. He would have not been able to wait any longer and converted me into one of them. But I would have died since the headpieces would have blocked them from infecting me, so they couldn't stabilize me. Filled with remorse, since my blood was on his hands, he would have let you out, and you would have continued on, sad about my death, but more motivated than ever to survive. And you would have been that character who everyone loved and mourned over, Emma finished. Precisely, Harriet nodded. This is their own little sick musical, and we just beat the system. Uncle Henry was allowed to keep control of his body while I was stuck with him as a plot device. Not because their interests were aligned like he thought. They wanted to build sympathy for me. And for him. And now, they've just gotten me way too much good backstory for you to be the hero anymore. Oh, thank God, I have no fucking clue what's going on. Emma sighed. She gestured to the shoulder bag, which, against all laws of logic, was somehow still intact. All I need to... All... I know is I need to get to that device and to the theater. You knew enough, and had I died, you would have the motivation to be the perfect hero. Herod explained. Now, I've got that, because I just had to watch them kill my uncle. Bad decision on their half, really, because no offense to you, but I am far more resourceful. Yeah, none taken, Emma shrugged. You're not wrong. We're not resting for the night, Harry told her. We have weapons, and we're going to use them. I had wanted to get through this without bloodshed. Now, I don't care. Anything that hosts one of those things is good as dead to me. Let's not go insane, Emma attempted soothing. I have no more family left to impress anymore. No one to look up to. I make my own rules, and in my book, anyone who played a part in killing my uncle is going to die themselves, Harry growled. Screw morality. This is, is, this is exactly what they wanted from me, Emma told her softly. Harry could hear the fear in her friend's voice. Yeah, well, they're going to get it, Harriet smirked and wicked a twisted smirk. 
Do you really want to stoop to their level? Emma asked. Harry could tell this was a desperate last attempt. Maybe we could get out of this. Actually save people and be heroes. But you'll never be a hero if you kill innocent victims of their game. That got Harriet thinking. Emma had way with words, apparently. Unexpected, but she'd take it. Perhaps Emma has a point. Heroes didn't kill innocent people. When you thought about it, none of those people chose to be infected. So, all of them were innocent. And all Harriet had ever wanted to do was be a hero. To prove to those who mocked her for what she was that she could be so much better than them. She took a deep sigh. He looked Emma dead in the eyes. You're right, she stared. Thank you for making me think rationally. Uh, any time? Emma shrugged. Look, you were scaring me. I didn't. I just did what I had to do. We're still not resting for the night, she told Emma. We have means of self-defense, if they're necessary. But, Emma started, we want to get this done as soon as possible, right? Harriet reasoned. Well, well, fuck, let's go before I change my mind. Emma huffed, starting to walk out of the university. Harriet chuckled and followed beside her. Good of you to come around, Harriet smirked. Just so you know, they're going to be on high alert now, so we're going to need to be very careful. Uh, no shit? Emma rolled her eyes sarcastically. We've ruined their plan, so they're really going to be out for us. Harriet chuckled nervously. She followed Emma out to the university. They had taken a different exit this time, and it led to them by a series of dumpsters. She heard a rustle, and it slowly drew her gun. Emma muttered under her breath, drawing her own gun. Harriet had an accurate sense of hearing, which came in handy at times like these. She picked up on a bit of movement in one of the dumpsters. A place for one of them to be hiding. She grabbed the garbage bags and tossed them off, one by one. She kept a tight grip, a grip and aim on her gun. As she lifted the last bag, she braced herself. She sighed and looked at what it was. A little boy sat in front of her, shaking with fear. She looked over to him. No blue. Genuine emotions. He wasn't one of them. Slowly, she lowered her gun and extended a hand to him. It's okay. We're safe. Harriet soothed, seeing the tear in the boy's eyes. He pulled away from her hand. You must be very strong to have lasted this long. Yeah, what's your name, buddy? Emma asked, peering over Harriet's shoulder. Uh, uh, Henry? The boy stammered. Fuck! Harriet huffed, walking away from the dumpster in a frustrated flurry. This earned her a glare from Emma. Sorry for my friend, Emma Sue, just she has a very special person in her life named Henry who she lost. It, 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 it's okay, I, I lost my mommy, the boy whimpered. I don't know where to find her. We could help you, Emma told her. Harriet turned to her on this. No, bad idea. Do not bring the child. The child is a liability. He would only drag them down. Emma, may I talk to you for a moment? Harriet asked sweetly, not wanting to scare the child any more than she already had. As soon as Emma was close, she grabbed her by the arm and faced them away from the boy. What the fuck, Emma? Be smart. He needs us, Harriet. She pleaded. There is literally no one else to take care of him. We could get, ki we could get him killed, Emma. Harriet told her, all the gravity of the situation in her tone. Have you ever considered how dangerous what we're doing is going to be? I'm not losing someone else. Harriet, we can't just leave him. He'll die without us, she countered. At least with us, his chances of survival go up dramatically. Do you really want to take a child with everything at stake? Harriet softly asked. Emma has convinced her, but... She needed to be sure she knew the implications. We're going to have to, Emma sighed. They both turned to the kid. He could be no older than six. His head popped out of the dumpster, 
and he looked terrified, but slightly less terrified than he had been. Come on, Henry, Harriet sighed, her heart throbbed a little, even saying the name. We're going on an adventure. A a an adventure? He asked, unsure. Come to think of it, Harriet thought he looked a lot like what her uncle had looked like as a child, or at least what he looked like in the pictures he showed her. This was all scarily coincidental. How would you like to save the world? Emma smiled at him. He slowly climbed out of the trash. But I have to find Mommy, he whimpered. And you will, Harriet assured him. We just have to save her first. Is Mommy in trouble? He asked, scared. Everyone is, Henry, Emma told him gently. That's why we need to save them. But, 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 I, I, I'm too small to save the world, he began to panic. No one's too small to save the world. They're only too scared, Harriet quoted. Her uncle had the same thing to her many times. Can you be brave, Henry? I, I, I don't, I don't know, he whimpered. Please, I'm asked. For your mommy. Oh, okay. He sniffed, taking Harriet's hand. Harriet blushed a little. She hadn't been expecting that. He looked up to her. You, you look like my mommy. Um, Harriet was confused as to what she would be saying. Uh, that's cool, Emma smiled. She then looked at Harriet, and Harriet saw the confusion on her face. Oh, good. She wasn't alone. Maybe you were related, Harriet tried. Do you know her last name? Um, Higgins, he stated, a little cheerier. What the fuck? Harriet let go of his hand and backed away a little. She merely felt guilty for swearing in front of a child, but she couldn't help her own nature. This was all too coincidental for her liking. She had no clue what the hell was going on, but shit was weird. You can't be a Hitchens. Uncle Henry and my dad were the only ones left. Oh, he furred his brows confused. Oh, no, sweetie, she doesn't mean that you aren't, Emma explained, equally as confused. She's just surprised since... I am a Hitchens, too, Harry finished. Maybe you're my sister, Henry shrugged, a small frown on his face. I'm, I'm a little hungry. No time to eat. We've already wasted so much time here. Harriet muttered. Come on, Henry. We're going to the theater. <gasps> I love musicals, he grinned. You won't by the end of this, believe me, Emma chuckled, starting to walk back onto the regular streets. Harriet picked up Henry and carried him along. He seemed amused by this. She couldn't help but smile. He was very cute, but she couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that something was going to go wrong. Chapter 5 The I Love You Song So, do you know your parents' names? Harriet tried asking. Perhaps it was a different line of Hatchifield Hedgens. Not that they structured themselves like those of old Victorian family lines, but they really did. Everyone knew everyone. The Hatchifield Hedgens have migrated to New York for the most part. She knew that. The only ones left in Hedgefield at this point were Uncle Her Henry and her parents. That was until the accident. It really was a miracle that she had survived. It was weird thinking that there might be... more of them. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy, mm-hmm. Henry nodded. Harry chuckled. Usually she wouldn't have been annoyed, but this was cute. Uh... Do you know a mommy and daddy Hitchens, Harriet? Emma teased. That struck a chord, but she wasn't sure why. She thought that she had come to terms with that. Well, considering how I never met mine, no. Harriet chuckled sadly. You don't have a mommy and daddy? Henry asked. That's why I needed Uncle Henry, Harriet told him. Oh, 
He furrowed his brow. You look sad. <laughs> I am sad, <laughs> Harry admitted, sighing. You remind me of him. Now that I look at you, you have his eyes. You good, Harry? Emma asked, rubbing Harriet's arm a little. <laughs> no, not really. But we don't have time to consider my emotions, so let's just keep walking, Harriet sighed. Oh, there's my home! Henry cheered as they walked past a bookstore, one that Harriet had quite frequently visited herself, the Higgins Family Bookstore. Her uncle had hired a staff to run it, but it was always a fun place for excursions. Your home? Harriet quirked an eyebrow. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. I slept on the top shelf. Henry nodded, grinning. Something then sparked in Harriet. This could be their only chance to get supplies if people lived there. There was bound to be something there. Let's stop in and you could show me, Harriet smiled. Hmm, Harry? Emma asked, confused. Uh, water would be nice right now, wouldn't it, Emma? Harriet explained. Oh, true, Emma breathed. I could fucking kill for some food. Language? Harriet sighed. You don't pay attention to Emma with her dirty mouth, okay, Henry? She's not as dis distinguished as us Hidgens. Remind me again what the first word out of your mouth was when you heard his name? Emma asked rhetorically. Hidgens cussed tastefully, Harriet shrugged. Cuss? Emma scoffed. Someone has certainly softened up a little, hasn't she? He is one of my own, Harriet shrugged. Pigeons take care of each other. Is there, like, a set of rules you guys have to follow in order to belong to your family? Emma asked. Mm-hmm. Henry nodded. It's basically drilled into our minds from birth, Harry chuckled as they approached the bookstore. Uncle Henry taught me well. I mean, I know he was weird, but I assumed that was a him thing, not an entire family thing. Emma laughed. Harriet opened the door to the bookstore. What have you brought us this time, Henry? A rich female voice called out. Emma and Harriet froze in the doorway. People. Henry chuckled. Come on, you've got to meet Mommy. Mommy, Mommy, she looks just like you. I thought you said you lost your Mommy, you fucking traitor. Harriet raised an eyebrow. Brows clearly unimpressed and immediate disgust in her tone. Her mood changes were aggressive and inexplicable at her best. That's just how she was. She dropped Henry, and he ran into the house. I thought you said you were going to ta to cuss tastefully, Emma whispered. Fuck that, I'm upset, Harriet sighed. She heard footsteps approaching them, and she found herself face to face with... No... You're right, Henry. I see the resemblance. The woman chuckled. Henry followed closely behind her, hiding behind her painfully. She says she's a Hitchens, too! Henry exclaimed excitedly. Are you? The woman asked, looking Harriet dead in the eyes, which Harriet immediately broke. You're dead. Harriet shook her head. I never got to meet you because you are dead. Dead! Uh, Harriet? The woman's tone softened. She turned around and called to the back of the store. Harry! You'll never guess who Henry brought home! Henry found people? A man who Harriet has only seen pictures of walked over in the back. Harriet felt her eyes water with bitter, bitter tears. You've been alive all these years, Harriet spat. I've been lied to my entire life. No, darling, your Uncle Henry was certain we were dead. Hell, everyone was. We go. We woke up on cots being prepared for our incineration, the man soothed. Come, give your mother and I a hug. 
Oh no, I'm, I'm not really a hug person. Harriet trailed awkwardly, backing away, gaze fixed on the floor, tears starting to trickle down her cheeks. What's wrong, love? Her mother asked, closing in on her. Look at me. Look into my eyes. You could trust me. I don't really do that either. Harriet flushed, looking at her feet. We've missed you, her father told her, scooping her into a hug. Harriet tensed. Something here was wrong. We wanted to reach out, but we couldn't, her mom nodded, joining in, causing Harriet to go even more tense. She did not like this, not one bit. And this is all too much, Harriet shuddered. Your family is never too much, her mother chided. Hey, lady, back off! Emma pulled Harriet's parents off of her and shoved her mother away. She needs some time to process. Your daughter's a genius. Her mind works a little differently. Are, are, are you okay, Miss Harriet? Henry asked, approaching from behind. How the hell had he gotten back there? Children. Very mysterious creatures. I'm not fine. God damn it. Harriet snapped. I just found out after all these years of having closure that you're alive. And worst of all, you didn't give enough shits about me to have any part of my life. Yet, you're happily raising another child. I mean, I knew sibling preference was a thing, but I didn't think it would ever happen to me. Much less this dramatically. <laughs> Darling, uh, we... Harriet's father started. Shut the fuck up, Harriet roared. She then began to sob. She whimpered out loudly. I don't want to hear it. But we... Her mother tried. You what? You had government restrictions. You couldn't reach out because of those. That is shit. Harriet sputtered. How did you... Harriet's father started. You forget that I'm still a Higgins. And that is the most Higgins excuse out there. Harriet shook her head. No, you left him with Uncle Henry intentionally. You full well know we could have had a life together. It would have been easy. You think Uncle Henry wanted to raise a kid? He had big plans. And I was only a damper to them for the first few years until I was a component. He would have happily given me back to you without a peep about you being alive and assumed a guardianship on all legal documents of what you were going to say was true. But no, you didn't want me. So what's so special about little Henry? <laughs> Why is he so much fucking better than me? Why doesn't he have parental love from you? Mommy, she's scaring me, Henry whimpered. Harriet took a breath. And... And for that, I'm truly sorry, Harriet sighed. You don't deserve that. It's not your fault that they abandoned me. Harriet, her mother started, don't. Harriet cut her off. Just don't. I came to terms with your death years ago. I might as well just live on as if you're still dead, because you are to me. Hey, Harriet, uh... We got Henry home, Emma pointed out. Uh, let's go. What about food and water? Harriet sniffed, looking into her friend. Remember? You'd kill for some food? Some people are worth sacrificing free food for, Emma smiled softly. Besides, these people are dicks. No, please stay. Henry begged. I want to be with my big sister. Henry, these people are no more my parents than Emma is a millionaire. Harriet explained softly. I am not your sister. My father, the man who raised me, to be a stellar woman I am today in this society, was Professor Henry Higgins. He was a better person than those two will ever be. I consider it an honor to have been raised by him. Henry's dead. 
Harriet's mom asked. They got to him, Emma nodded solemnly. That's awful, Harriet's father shook his head. Henry was a good man, and an even better brother. Who got Uncle Henry? Henry asked. I thought he was lost. Uh, Henry, let's go clean up for a second while Daddy talks to Harriet. Harriet's mom urged, picking him up, quickly leaving the room. That was really fucking sketchy, Emma chuckled nervously. Hitchens, Harriet shrugged. We really are a different breed. She probably forgot to explain the concept of death to him. Indeed, that's it. Harriet's father started. How's your life been? Cut the small talk. Harriet rolled her eyes. It's insulting. You've grown to be a fine young woman. Harriet's father chuckled. Smart, which is why you should know the truth. About what? Harriet asked. Harriet asked. About the fact that you were dead on about your uncle Henry being your father. Except it's not just figurative, Herod's father admitted. Okay, that has got to be embarrassing to admit, Emma sn snorted. I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't find this funny, but your wife fucked your brother. Did she, like, mix him up with you? Emma! Harriet chided. And as for that news, I'm not entirely sure if it's true. Because you're stalling. What for, Dad? Please tell me. I think you know. He smirked. Emma? Leave. Harriet's eyes widened as backing music began. It was jazzy yet upbeat. Ugh. Thought Harriet. She could already tell this was going to be one of those family songs everyone went goo goo gaga for. You can't leave now. Henry entered singing, freshly covered in blood, guts out, blue oozing from every pore. No, I know how. You're one of us, Harriet's mom sang, following closely behind. And Hitch doesn't leave a Hitch is behind. A go of fears, her dad sang, grabbing her shoulder. She quickly spun out of it. Let us dry your tears. You're one of us, they all sang, circling around Harriet, who was backing up to get away from it. We share one heart, one soul, and mind. Well, shit, Harriet breathed, approaching a wall. And if you think that you're gonna walk away... The concerned her. Think again, cause that's not happening, not today. Family is more than just a word, it's a bond. They continued, breaking away from Herod as if to perform some sort of audience. A sadistic audience, thought Harriet, to take pleasure in watching her suffer. It can't be broken no matter how much you try. Family, Henry sung, could be everything you want. All you gotta do is die. Harriet's parents finished off the chorus. Out the door while they were in the middle of their number, Harriet whispered to Emma, Wait, where's your shoulder bag with the device? Emma asked. Shit, Henry, Harriet growled. Stupid little brother stealing my stuff. Okay, let's ditch whatever the hell this number is and find your bag. They've probably hidden it somewhere in your, in the back, Emma reasoned. Quickly, while, they're, while they aren't singing at you. Harry nodded. It was a shame that her own emotions had clouded her judgment. So much that Emma had to be the thinker. She started to quickly roam the old bookstore, unable to stop herself from browsing the books on the shelves as she passed. She continued into the next room. She saw the satchel sitting on the table, and so she very quietly tiptoed into the room and snatched it. She was careful not to make any noise, 
as she put the satchel back over her shoulder, ensuring the device was in fact in it. She breathed a sigh of relief and carefully retracted her steps back to Emma, tapping her on the shoulder and signaling to the door. Emma nodded, and they both started to slink every very quietly towards the door before Harriet was pulled by the collar back into the room. Hitchens don't steal from Hitchens, Harriet, her entire family said in unison. They latched onto her, restraining her. Yeah, well, Hitchens don't rip each other's guts out either. How that one going for you? Harriet retorted. Is that seriously a rule in your family? Emma asked. Unfortunately, Harriet nodded. It's better if you don't ask questions. The world is changing, so the rules are changing. Her family smirked in unison. Harriet wasn't even phased, though Emma looked obviously terrified. That's not how it works, Harriet huffed. We decide that, her family sneered. We decide everything now. Ah, and I presume I'm talking to the collective, Harriet smirked. Indeed, they stated. Good, because I've been waiting to give you a piece of my mind, Harry growled. Oh, they asked. Here's my new rules, Harriet started to sing, the compulsion coming on her suddenly. She spoke out of their grasp and it poked around. I'm not your tool, I'm not one of you. One of us, her family backed her. You lost that the day you gave me away, Harriet spat. There's no reason why you should have to die to be one of you. One of us. Her family closed in around her. In that moment, terrified of dying, Harriet pulled the family shotgun. She aimed it at them, swinging it a little toward them. It was effective. And it's time to seize the day. Harriet realized, there's just one way to get out of here alive. So though I'm sorry I'm not dying, I'm going to thrive. And with that, she cut the song short by shooting both of her parents. She then whacked Henry over the head with a gun. She broke down into tears. <laughs> oh, God. She whimpered, looking at them. It didn't help that their blood was just a blue goo oozing out of them. She tried to recollect herself, obtain some sort of composure. Oh, God, what have I done? Holy shit. Emma breathed. Was that really necessary? No, but it was efficient, and our odds of surviving the next five hours just went up exponentially. Now, come on. Harriet reasoned, more trying to convince herself than anyone else. She pulled Emma out of the building. We need to get to the old Starlight Theater, and the quicker we can do that, the better. Five hours, Emma blinked. Harry, we've got two and a half at best. What? Harry blinked. We've been out here for a while, and that's not even counting what happened at Hatchetfield U, Emma reasoned. The air is getting suspiciously thick, Harry admitted. Dear Lord, all right, we have so little time. It's a five-minute walk, Emma chuckled. Relax. Yes, it was a five-minute walk three and a half hours ago, too, Harriet snapped. Okay, point taken, Harriet huffed. I'm just trying to keep positive. I apologize for being curt. Harriet sighed. It's just, there's a time and a place for everything. Right now, we need to be realistic. I can already feel the toxins in the air getting to my brain. That pieces will stop them from taking us over, but they can still kill us. We could die, Emma, in approximately two and a half hours. Or we could save the entirety of our race. You're right. I know. It's just... I've already been through one of these plots, Emma revealed. And the first time, it ended badly. There, were a, there was a millisecond away from ripping my guts out when I escaped. The guy I fell in love with. He hated musicals. They were his own personal nightmare. 
and now he's out there singing and dancing along with them. I don't want this to end the same way. So I'm trying to convince myself that it won't. Which is really fucking hard considering how everything you just said is right. Exactly. Everything I said is right, Harry assured her. Especially that we could save our race. So we just need to think practically. Okay, Emma breathed. Okay, just... Let's just keep walking. That was exactly what they did. They walked for a minute or two before they heard something from above. Harry looked up in wonder. It couldn't be. But it was. A helicopter was landing no more than 20 feet away from them. CIA! Not PEEP! Harry had found that odd, since these kinds of things were PEEP operations. Perhaps they'd already been to Hatchet Field. Perhaps unsuccessfully. Oh, f oh, fuck yeah! Emma whooped. It's the CIA! They can definitely help us. Peep would have been much more useful, but they'll do. Harry rolled her eyes. All of a sudden, there were millions of bullets flying at them from all angles. Harry skiffily dodged them. Emma was not so fortunate. Luckily, she's wearing the bulletproof vest, but the impact from the bullets took her down hard. Harry took her shotgun and started shooting back in defense. Oh, shit. We're not one of them. We survived. Please stop shooting. Oh, sorry, ma'am, but we can't take your word for that, Sondra called back. Do you see any blue on me? She asked. No. The soldier admitted, raising a hand. Hold your fire. Thank you, Harriet sighed. My name is Dr. Harriet Higgins. Doctor? He scoffed. You don't look like you've graduated high school. I swear, if one more person makes that joke like... I... She rolled her eyes. I have fast-tracked education. I'm a genius. Kind of a big deal. Anyways, I'm a doctor of biological... Biochemical engineering. I designed a device that will save us all. All I need to do is plant it... Is a little backup. Ma'am, you're not... On... Negotiating terms here, the soldier chuckled. Harriet felt a sharp prick in her neck. She felt a bit woozy. Sleep tight. Wait, no, 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 no. Harriet trailed weakly, unable to stop herself from surrendering into the deep sleep that came upon her. Chapter 6 Confrontation Harriet woke up, chained to a chair, her head pounding. She'd been meaning to tell them that sedatives did wonky things to her. She only knew this because at times, as a child, her games of spies with her Uncle Henry had gotten a bit too intense and realistic. Fun, nonetheless, and absolutely thrilling, but, well, unnecessarily real. Those were good times. Now, here she was. She'd quite literally been knocked out and tied up, which, in her experience with Uncle Henry, meant one thing. Interrogation. Now the game of spies had two purposes. One was to make pretend and have fun. The other was to train Harriet for if anything ever went wrong in their plan. Right now, the skills she'd learned in that game were becoming scarily relevant. She was a pro at interrogation. Uncle Henry could never manage to get anything out of her. In fact, she tended to lure him into answering more questions for her than asking questions to her. She smirked a little. Why well, couldn't you just take me at my word? She tattooed to no one in, the partic in particular. At the moment, an older man, a general, walked into the room, the soldier she'd already met close behind him. I apologize for the abruptness of my colleague, the older man started. He had a gray buzz cut and a large mustache that distracted you from any of his other facial features. Harriet willed herself to look in his eyes, if only for a moment, to see what she could analyze from there. They were a grayish color, for starters, but they looked kind, so either he was an exceptional actor and she was screwed, or he was being genuinely nice. His colleague looked less than amused. He had his arms crossed, and from what she could see, he was rolling his eyes. My name is General Up. My colleague is Sergeant Mills, Jr. You don't need to include the junior part. 
Sergeant Mills Jr. snapped. Your father was a good man, Jr. I chided. And now I'm trying to be my own man. I don't want to live in Daddy's shadow, Jr. grumbled. Herod had to stop herself from laughing. What a brat. We'll have to save the conversation for later, Jr. I gave him a death glare. Anyways, Jr. is rather ambitious, Dr. Higgins, and given the stories we've heard of your guardian, he acted before he had time to think over his actions. What do you have to say for that, Jr.? You're not seriously going to make me, Jr. started chuckling, Harry couldn't help but smirk. I am. Now say it. I patted him in the back. I'm not, Jr. shook his head, stopping the laugh. You will, soldier, or I'll see to it the next duty is a lot less pleasant. Up glared at him. It's humiliating. I took the right, Junior started before seeing Up reach for his comm system. All right, fine, I sincerely apologize, doctor. Please, it's Harry, Harriet smirked, and it's perfectly all right. I'd probably have done the same, although I would appreciate a Tylenol or two. Sedative make me feel a little wonky. Go on then, Junior, Up ordered. Get the girl a Tylenol. Yes, sir, Junior groaned, rolling his eyes and leaving the room. We were last re we are the last remaining squirtum of peep, uninfected by apotheosis, Up told her. We borrowed a CIA chapter since ours were all destroyed. We wanted to check for any survivors from our clean sweep. Turns out our clean sweep never even happened. Our soldiers were shot down and affected before they got the chance to do anything, so we're staying to formulate a strategy on how to eliminate all of them. This explains so much, Harry chuckled. You know, my- Now, Doctor, you're probably wondering after all- this why you're still tied up. Up started. He cut her off. She'd say that was rude, but to be honest, he probably hadn't even hurt her. So she carried on as if nothing happened. The thought had crossed my mind, Harry admitted. We were just a little suspicious of your device, is all, he told her. Oh, that's easy, Harry assured him. In all essence, it's a mass diffuser. Exactly what it, it emits is a mix of strontium chlorate and carbon monoxide. Not fatal to humans, but it will kill the apotheosis. We don't have enough data to counter that, but we'll take your word for it, given that you didn't lie about the contents. I told her. Thank you for your cooperation, Dr. Higgins of D Harry. We must have one more question before we can set you free. I got the stupid fucking tunnel up now. Open the goddamn door. Harry heard Junior's voice over Up's comms. Excuse my colleague. Up flushed, opening the door. He uses colorful language sometimes, and the wrong comms on most occasions. Oh, shit. Junior blushed. He walked into the room, Tylenol and a cup of water in hand. Sorry, up, and here's your Tylenol. You'll probably need a little help with that, given you can't use your hands, eh? Hey? I suppose so, Harry chuckled nervously. She hadn't thought about that when she'd asked for it. Um, should I just open your mouth, I guess? Junior flushed even redder. Yes, this was going to be very, very awkward. Harry opened her mouth, and he... With a lot of hesitation, placed the pill on her tongue. He then let it, held up the cup of water. Right, um, how are we going to do this? Put the condom to my mouth. Harry tried to get up, despite the awkward position of the pill on her, on her tongue. All right, Junior said, putting it by her lips. Harry was generally surprised that he'd understood her. Do I just... Do I just... Harry finishes the sentence for him. He tipped it up all right. A little too much. Harry gulped in what she could, but the rest went streaming down her jacket. When he finally pulled the cup away in shock, Harry took a huge gasp for hair. What are you trying to do? Waterboard me? Junior, up scolded. I am 
so sorry, I, I didn't expect, Junior rambled. It, it's fine, Harriet huffed. You ruined the mood, Junior. I was interrogating her, up snapped. Turn up, sir. No offense, but you don't interrogate, Junior looked down at his face. feet. What did you just say, boy? Up growled, getting right in Junior's face. You're... you're too nice, sir, Junior whimpered. Kindness never hurts, Junior. Up looked down to his feet. He still got the answer he needed, Harry admitted, feeling the need to comfort the man. He was immediately not the hard army general you'd expect. Actually, he was the kind of pathetic in a sense. But he was a good man, a sweetheart. In phantom speak, almost a bean. An aggressive bean, but a bean nonetheless. It's not like I was hiding anything, Junior. We don't know that, Junior glared at her. Smart women such as yourself can be very, very dangerous. She told the tr truth, Junior. Isn't that enough? Up took his turn to glare at Junior. How do we know? Junior snapped. We know nothing about these things. She told me exactly what was in it, Up yelled back. If she was going to lie, why would she start by telling the truth? To throw you off her trail, Junior shouted. It's a very obvious strategy. You may be right, Up realized. Were you lying to me, Harry? There's only one way to find out. Harriet suggested, because Junior will inevitably convince you that I'm lying if I don't interject now, I'm going to suggest you use a lie detector. Okay, she's making it hard not to believe her, Junior, upturned to his colleague. Why would she tell us to expose her? Because she's a multi-doctorate, and she's smart, Junior face-palmed. She thinks that I'll throw you off her trail. Again. Then go and get the lie detector. Harriet groaned annoyingly. She was so done with all this bullshit. I will, Junior threatened. Then for God's sake, just go and do it, Harriet snapped. Fine, he huffed, walking out of the room. For the record, General, you shouldn't let him get to your head, Harriet told him. Because think about it, why would a s any sane person want to do anything other than get rid of those things? Why would someone want to die? You make a valid point. Up considered. I guess we'll see what the lie detector has to say about it. I suppose we will, Harriet nodded. There was a brief bit of silence. Harriet had no clue how to follow up that. He likes you, you know, Up sighed. I beg your pardon? Harriet scoffed. He has done everything possible to go against me. That's a defense mechanism, Up laughed. You kids, you're all so blind. Defense mechanism, Harry told her head. Junior has a history of girlfriends who have been less than heroic, Up whispered. Most of his relationships have ended with him having to shoot them. So he wants? Harry started to make sure that you really go before he lets himself fall for you, Up winked. Oh, Harry blushed. God, a Oh, come on, don't pretend like you don't feel the same way. Up uh, patted her on the back. There was only one thing Harriet really knew for certain in the moment. She did not reciprocate Junior's opposed feelings. Dear Lord, no. She just hoped she wasn't leading him on. She was, again, horrible at social cues. Can't even look him in the eyes. That is how shy you are around him. It's adorable. That's because I don't look at anyone in the eyes up. Harriet snapped. She wasn't ready to talk about this. She was just going to have to. I'm, well, you've read my file, so you know. I'm autistic. A contact is one of those things that really gets me anxious. It's why I avoid it. I'm not interested in Junior. I'm just extremely awkward socially. I don't understand social cues. That's just a part of what makes me, me. I never read your file, I admitted. But judging from how flustered you are, which you just did, is mighty brave. Thank you for that, and I'm sorry for making assumptions. No, nope, that, that's not your fault, Harriet assured him. Up, I have a few questions. Shoot. 
He smiled at her. How long was I out exactly? She started. About fifteen minutes, he told her. Why? My clock is ticking, she mumbled to herself. Hey up, where's Emma? Oh, little Miss Perkins. She's actually just getting out of the infirmary. If anything is going according to schedule, up chuckled. Now, as long as you don't have any more questions, I'm going to get her for you and try to find where that fool boy Junior is. Okay, Harriet sighed. Harriet was at long last alone. She looked around the room f for the first time. It was rather plain. The table for torture devices, a one-sided mirror. It was typical, and typical almost made her uncomfortable. She looked at herself. She barely recognized the girl in front of her. Before the apotheosis, her features were soft. Now she looked like a hardened veteran. She heard a small bit of background music. Oh no. Am I crazy? Maybe I've always been, she started. There's nothing left in me. I killed her with I killed her with what I did. Was my integrity worth anything at all? And what will I become before I fall? Harriet? A voice cut in softly as the music faded. Oh God, only a mini song. It's getting worse, isn't it? My inner monologue, it's starting to come out. Harriet sighed. I fear we have little time left. It's obviously deepening in our bloodstream. Are you okay? Emma started chuckling. Harriet quirked an eyebrow. Yes, Harriet confirmed, confused. Why? Your shirt is soaked, Emma snorted and laughed. Very mature, Harriet rolled her eyes. Stupid fucking Junior nearly killed me. Stupid fucking Junior's back, Junior announced, up right behind him. But both covered in blue shit. Fuck no, Emma nearly shrieked. Junior, I didn't mean it like that, Harriet backtracked. Music started playing. Harriet knew what that meant. And she wasn't ready to die. Shit. Emma groaned. Harriet, the last time this kind of thing happened was Sam and Charlotte. Don't fall for anything. I could not be less interested. Harriet rolled her eyes. Don't worry. For a moment, I set my eyes on you. I knew that you were going to be mine, Junior sang. I'm not yours, Harriet scoffed. Your grace, it blinded me, and every single thing you said and did was just so divine, he continued. Please stop, Harriet cringed. I can't go another second without your love, babe. Junior got on one knee while up undid Harriet's cuffs so Junior could take her hands in a very tight grip. For some reason, though, she was willing herself to. She couldn't kick him in the nuts. Great, he was starting to control her nervous system. Any chance you might have had with me, you killed with one word, Harriet groaned won't go on in this world without you. I promise that never again I will doubt you. He belted. So give me a heart, babe, and maybe just a little bit of your guts. Gross! Harry chuckled sarcastically. Give me a kiss, baby. Give me a chance, I'm not asking for much, he continued. You're asking for my whole fucking, Harriet started. And if you do, we'll make it last for all time. He cut her off. Give me a heart, babe. Let me make you mine. 
let him make you his. Up came the background vocals. All he wants is one kiss. I want to make you mine. Junior sang again. Listen, jerk face, let me tell you, you're flat. Harriet snapped. She pulled her hands out of his and stood up. Forcing love isn't where it's at. That was horrible, Emma cringed. Rhyme scheme, Har Harriet shrugged. I'm not dumb. I'm a dangerous woman, so don't force me to kill. Because we just want to survive this, and if that's being threatened, you know we will. Emma joined her. Give me your heart, babe, and maybe just a little bit of your guts, Junior repeated. Give me a kiss, baby, give me a chance, I'm not asking for much. You're asking for my life, Harriet Gretel. And if you do, make it last for all time, Junior continued. I want to love you forever. He wants to love you forever. Emma and up backed him. Emma looked terrified. Let me love you forever and ever and ever and ever and he sang before the music slowed. Who else do you have to love you? Who else do you have to care? Who else is left to keep you happy when you're sad? Will anyone be there? Let me be the one to hold you when the night gets dark. Emma harmonized with him. Harriet looked to Emma confused. Why in the world would she be singing that? Let me be the one to love you. Let me be the one who loves you. Emma finished on her own. Harriet paused. She probably meant as a friend, right? This had to be Emma's way of protecting her, trying to ward her away from Junior, who had in fact made herself sound very appealing. She missed her family, and she felt quite alone. Harry took out a throwing knife and lodged it dead in the center of Up's forehead. She noticed her satchel eventually, with the device inside of it, slung over Junior. She wanted to take out her shotgun before she could. Junior grabbed the sides of her face and kissed her deeply. Surprisingly, there was no blue goo piling to her mouth like she expected, and the kiss was tender. This was actually Junior, loving her. She still didn't like him. But she couldn't kill him while he was being innocent. So, in an unexpected turn of events, even for her, she kissed back. Passionately, out of sympathy for what she was about to do. Because now, at least, he could go on thinking he'd been truly loved for once in his life. Unfortunately, he hadn't been. And she was just extremely sympathetic, but at least it was something. She then pulled away. I love you, Junior whispered, his face controlling. Uh, me too? Harry tried slowly stealing the satchel while he was frozen. As soon as it was event evident he was not himself anymore, she took her shotgun and hit him in the head. She then looked to Emma. Let's get out of here. Yeah, right, Emma sighed, falling behind Harriet. Guns out! We're shooting our way out of here, Harry told her, and so they did. Any Apotheosis victims, which were all of them, were shot dead upon sight, until Emma and Harriet were safely back onto the streets. Harriet then took the opportunity to wipe her lips off, as that would help anything. She shuddered. Kissing him was not a fun experience. You look like you're having a good enough time, Emma rolled her eyes. 
I was faking it. I felt bad. He's had a history of evil girlfriends, so if I could let him go feeling like he was loved at least once in his life, I was going to. Harry chuckled. You understand, right? Sure. Emma grumbled. Is something wrong? Harry asked, confused as to why Emma was so grumpy. Grumpy. No, everything's fine, Emma huffed. Let's just keep walking to the theater. And that is it for today. Thank you for listening, if you made it this far. Uh, this is definitely one of the longer Wapiru loads. I mean, it's an hour and 20 minutes long. Stay tuned for next week's episode. If you look in the description, you'll find a lot of fun things, including all my social medias, like my Discord, Wattpad, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, TikTok, all the good stuff. And you could check that out down below, along with the link to my second YouTube channel, where I go live sometimes. I've been busy lately, so not really lately. But I go live sometimes. And yeah, look on the screen, click on some videos, have a good time, and like always, do your best.